Hello, today we are going over the new rune forges coming in Shadowlands for us Death Knights, and I'm going to share with you a little known secret to use them to their fullest potential, especially in PvP. However, I'm thinking that you guys will come up with some great ideas to probably make this pretty cool in PvE as well. And trust me, you're gonna wanna see this. But first, a message from our sponsor, my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash ZottisWow, where I stream every Friday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, and I'm looking to expand that to be more regular throughout the week. Swing by for Frost DK and Unholy DK gameplay, good times, and good fun. So first off, I can't take all the credit for this. So a huge shout out to Yoga Bayou. sorry if I pronounce your name wrong, but Yoga brought this to my attention and he is a genius because this is game changing. So first off in Shadowlands, we are getting a few new rune forges and these rune forges bring along with them a lot more utility than we are used to seeing in rune forges in World of Warcraft. First, we have Sanguination, which makes your death strike do more damage based on your target's missing health. It will also proc and heal you for 48% of your health over 8 seconds once every 5 minutes when you drop below 35% health. This is super cool, however, it does have a very long 5 minute debuff and it will follow you into the arena so that is definitely something to keep in mind so you don't get caught off guard. Next we have Rune of Hysteria which has a chance on attack to proc and increase your runic power generation by 20% and it also will increase your maximum amount of runic power that you're capable of having at any given point 120 instead of 100. Next up, we have Rune of Spell Warding, which has a chance on attack to give you a 10% health shield, protecting you from magic damage, and it has a chance to reflect magic damage that you take back at the caster. There are other new Rune Forges and even some old ones too that are really good. However, these ones that we've talked about are the main ones to suit our needs for this video. I do really strongly suggest though that you guys go and test out the other Rune Forges for yourselves, depending on the spec and type of content that you participate in and let me know in the comments down below what cool combinations and ideas you have. So now that we have all these really cool rune forges of all this extra utility, how do we use them to their fullest potential? A huge problem with these rune forges is that you can only apply one to each weapon and that means that for everyone except for dual wield frost DKs, you can only have one at a time. Or can you? Ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce to you Frost DK Weapon Swapping in its fullest glory. Now, this is a very little known technique. I have not seen a single other Frost DK or any other kind of DK doing this on the PTR. The only other person that's ever mentioned it to me is Yoga back in the comments. And since I've started weapon swapping, I've been getting asked by nearly all of my victims how and why I'm weapon swapping. So let's get into it. As you can see on the screen right now, I can make macros that easily and quickly allow me to swap between my weapons. 
these are very important. You don't necessarily need them for the two-handed weapons, but for the dual wield weapons, it is extremely important that you have a single macro because this will make sure that they get slotted into your character equipment slots in the right order. All of this allows me to swap them out in combat, whether I'm in arena, open world, PvE, raids, and mythic plus in Shadowlands. Each one of my weapons has a different rune on it. And that way I'm able to swap between them as much as I possibly want or need to, to suit various different circumstances. The idea is when I'm facing heavy magic users like Rep Paladin, Unholy DK, Enhancement Shaman, Sub Rogue whenever they're bursting and if they're taking the talent that makes them do shadow damage, and all casters. When I'm facing any of these magic users, then I make sure I use my Rune of Spell Warding, which I have applied to a two-hand weapon so that I get the maximum amount of damage possible out of it. And this ultimately turns the tables in our favor. When I fall below 50% health, then I swap to my dual wield weapons, and this has Rune of Hysteria on my main hand weapon for the proc chance, and it has Rune of Sanguination on my offhand for all the Sanguination effects. This is the big Death Strike build. It makes your Death Strike hit harder. It increases your runic power generation, both because of Rune Hysteria and its 20% proc, but also because I'm running Runic Attenuation, which scales with weapon speed. So that means that I'm getting more runic power naturally. All of this equals a ton of runic power to dump into a ton of huge Death Strikes that just hit harder and harder and harder the more health that my enemy loses. When I drop below 35% health, if I don't already have my dual wield set equipped with Sanguination on it, then I make sure I swap to Sanguination, that way I can get that big ol' heal, and then once I get the heal and it has done its thing over 8 seconds, then I will either stay that way to stay tanky, or I will swap back to my main weapon. When I'm in good health and I want to push for a kill, then this is when I pull out the main weapon. I usually start my battles this way, and I'll often end my battles this way if I need to get that extra damage. So this is my Getaku, and it has Rune of the Fallen Crusader on it for maximum burst damage. I swap between these weapons instantly with no downsides, and let me say, it makes a big difference. Before weapon swapping, I struggled to defeat equally skilled and geared Rep Pallies, Shadow Priests, Fury Warriors, Sub Rogues, Feral Druids, and Unholy DKs in duels and in double DPS arenas where the enemy team consisted of those classes. All of these classes are either hard counters to Frost DK, have much higher sustain healing than us due to current PTR tuning, have explosive damage due to current PTR tuning, or do both high damage and high sustain healing making them especially tough for Frost DK. Since I began swapping my weapons, it is even the playing field. I actually stand a chance and can pull out a win if I play to the best of my ability against these classes. Before weapon swapping, I was largely helpless against their overwhelming healing, damage, and or utility, whether it be a natural counter or just imbalance on the PTR. Swapping weapons isn't overpowered. It feels exactly like what Frost DK has been missing ever since this PTR started and I got a chance to play it. This is super fun and it adds a ton of skill cap and a ton of depth to a class that is largely criticized for lacking both. Ultimately, if Blizzard were to nerf these Runeforges or make it to where we couldn't do this at all, it would be to a massive detriment to the class. This isn't overpowered. It literally puts us on an equal playing field and it makes the class feel the way that it should feel. Everything feels good now. This is the missing thing that we were all wondering, what's missing from Frost DK? Well, this is it. Hit that like button, it helps tremendously with the algorithm. If you want to see more videos like this about DKs and Shadowlands, then make sure you hit that subscribe button. We also now have a community discord, and I have that link down in the description below, and I have it linked on my channel banner, so that you guys can all join up and we can all hang out and discuss Frost DK and Unholy DK and all the stuff DK. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.